Hello there, this is Andrew Bridges with Photron. I'd like to talk to you today about the Krista, our high-speed polarization camera. This is a very new system officially launched last month in the US. We're still developing the software to meet different applications, but the following slides deal some, with some possible applications you might be tasked with imaging that have not previously been possible utilizing existing technology. One note is that this presentation was originally given uh, for a military test range uh, audience, so the majority of the applications are detailing with military style applications. Why polarization? Well, there are many ways of imaging what is occurring on the outside of an object. Digital image correlation, infrared imaging, and conventional high speed and 30 frame per second imaging, to name just a few. But what happens if you want to see what is taking place within the object, beneath the surface? Well, the top video here is of the transient stress in a viscoelastic fluid and was recorded at 250 frames per second with a 50 times optical magnification. In the image on the right, the conventional video, you can clearly see the beads whizzing around. But with the polarization view on the left, you can see the pressure of the fluid, the stress within the non-Newtonian fluid. The lower video is of infrared alongside a retardation polarization view. The Photron Crista utilizes a two-dimensional birefringence distribution measurement system with a sampling rate of over 1 million frames per second. This comprises of a pixelated polarizer array made from photonic crystal and a high-speed CMOS sensor with parallel readout circuits with multi-channel analog to digital converters engineered for two-dimensional polarization detection. The photonic crystal lattice features pixels in groups of four square each having a different polarization axis at 0 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and 135 degrees. By applying phase shifting algorithms with circularly polarized incident light, birefringence phase difference and azimuthal angle can be measured to enable us to quantify and measure physical stress in transparent and semi-transparent fluids and solids. What is birefringence? Well, crystalline materials can be classified as either isotropic, where a fraction is symmetrical, so the same regardless of the direction of the light passing through the material, for example, glass or sodium chloride. However, some materials are anisotropic. It means having a physical property that has a different value when measured in a different axis. Wood is a very good example of an anisotropic material, as it has two distinctly different axes and is stronger along the grain than across it. Calcite is another example where light is refracted into two rays, the ordinary ray and the extraordinary ray, that is dependent on the refractive index of the material. One of these rays will typically travel slower than the other. This difference is defined as the retardation. Birefringence, or double refraction, is the optical property of a material having a refractive index that depends on the polarization and propag propagation direction of light. What are the benefits of high-speed 2D polarization? Well, traditional polarization systems often utilize rotating or moving polarization filters. This present, prevents them from capturing full-field two-dimensional data. By bonding the photonic crystal polarizer directly to the high-speed camera sensor, with our pixels offset by 45 degrees from their immediate neighbors in groups of four, we can record high-speed two-dimensional polarization data at traditional high-speed framing rates with very short shutter times if required. What benefits does this give you? Well, the main advantage is the ability to see the whole picture, not just one line at a time or one specialized viewpoint. In addition to capturing the two-dimensional area scan high-speed birefringence data showing what is happening inside the block of acrylic being drilled, we also capture traditional high-speed grayscale data for display alongside the polarization image. In the video recorded at 1000 frames per second with the Krista, you can clearly see the stress in both the lateral and vertical axes. I've attempted to break this presentation into three sections where we, non-experts admittedly, can potentially see the CRISTA being possibly employed alongside the existing arsenal of imaging systems employed in the typical test range. The first of these potential application areas is the analysis of a projectile's launch and flight. As we can see in the top video here, the test subject is simply an air duster or canned air. 
The lower view shows an interferometer image of the compressed air blast showing changes in optical density of the air around the blast. Interferometers are widely used in science and industry for the measurement of small displacements, refractive index changes and surface irregularities. We are developing a high-speed dynamic interferometer using the CRISTA camera technology. In an interferometer, light from a single source is split into two beams that travel different optical paths, then are combined again to show the interference. The resulting interference fringes give information about the difference in the optical path length. Being able to quantify the phase difference is useful because we can see changes of the medium such as air, gases, water, shock waves, etc. The image to the left shows a typical design for a high-speed interferometer. We've even used this system to image sound waves. The top video shows sound from a loudspeaker recorded at 40,000 frames per second, while the lower video is of the same thing but with the sound reflected at 45 degrees. This system can even be utilized to image inside a vehicle through glass or other transparent materials such as sapphire. It is important when looking through materials to choose a material with a very low residual stress. As with all polarization imaging applications, it is important if you wish to see and measure just the dynamic results. The second theoretical application is for the analysis of detonations and high energy impact events. This test shows the typical setup where the light source between 520 to 530 nanometers is placed behind the test subject with a circular polarizer. This wavelength can be changed if required. Polarization imaging is usually targeted for the study of transparent or semi-transparent. A minimum of 30% light transmission is required. But we are currently experimenting in using photoelastic film with reflected light for drop testing of phones and tablets to measure the stress in the display glass. The video on the left is of a ball bearing or a, uh, impacting a safety lens recorded with the CRISTA at 7,000 frames per second. Here is another high-speed retardation video captured with the CRISTA, this time of a tensile test performed on a thin optical film. It is not terribly clear in this example, but you can see the cracks appearing at the neck near the top of the film. We can, of course, adjust the scale of the data being displayed. Here is a simple test that we can repeat in the lab where an acrylic block is struck with a hammer. This test shows the full test setup with the test subject being positioned between the light source and the high-speed polarization camera. This expensively produced video shows the data captured retardation data visible on the blue screen above the camera after the, in, after the edit indicated by the black flash and was recorded at 30,000 frames per second. The last potential application I would like to suggest for the CRISTA camera is survivability testing. There is a great deal of well-publicized research going on to investigate the short and long-term effects of concussion in sports. Though this video was from an investigation into shaken baby syndrome, perhaps this research might also be pertinent to head protection research for infantry personnel and possibly IED and other blast survivability testing. In the video of a modified gelatin Holborn's brain model, the C shape in the center represents the later lateral ventricle or brain stem. While the brain's mass is fairly fluid, like water, the stem is more rigid and in this example severely damaged. The model experienced less than 1.5 Gs of shock but would likely have proven fatal to the subject. This recording was made at 500 frames per second with a 20 centimeter field of view. We can also synchronize the polarization data with other imaging systems such as infrared. Here again, polarization shows internal stress, this time in a film stretch test recorded at 120 frames per second. Note how the retardation image best shows the stress around the two NICs that is not visible in the infrared view and enables us to analyze how stress is distributed and contributes to the fractures. Molecular chain can, be can determine a material's ability to withstand impact. Polarization enables us to see the orientation of the molecules. The infrared shows the surface temperature and was recorded at 60 frames per second. This example uses the same test configuration, but this time we are squeezing a U-shaped piece of epoxy resin while showing the real-time image on the display. As well as the retardation data, 
we can also show the axis direction of the strain, each of the four different polarization axis pixels, as well as the traditional high-speed data, for the CRISPR can still operate as a normal monochrome high-speed camera. Well, thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, please do drop us an email. My email address is abridges at photron.com, and I can be reached at both of the phone numbers displayed here, or visit our website at www.photron.com. Thanks again for your time.